Plastic is everywhere. It's in our oceans. It even ends up washing up onto shore on our beaches. You can even find it in the water that we drink on a day-to-day -day basis. And crazy enough, it ends up in our food too. Plastics last longer than a lifetime. It takes at least 100 years to break down, and even then, it, also, it only breaks down into microplastics. In order to understand how we've gotten to such a big issue now, we need to take a look back, and we need to understand how we even got to this point in the first place. Plastic was first created in 1907 by Leo Bakeland, although it didn't start to be mass-produced until after the Second World War. Plastic started to grow in popularity because it was cheap, versatile, and easy to manufacture. Let's follow the life of a plastic bottle. We're going to start in a big factory where the bottles are made and then lined up to be pumped full of liquids and then to be wrapped and then to be shipped off and sold and then to be thrown away again. More than 9 billion tons of plastic has been produced since 1950. That's insane. Plastic is also produced six times more than aluminum and 20 times more than copper. Plastic products normally go one of three places after they're thrown away. The first option that I'm about to tell you about is when it goes into a landfill. Tons of garbage is dumped into a landfill, including lots of plastic materials. The plastic is being compressed, and as that happens, when rainwater comes by, and it flows through the waste. The rainwater will absorb the water soluble compounds that it contains. Some of these compounds can be deadly. Together they create a harmful compound called leachate. This can move into groundwater, soil, and streams, which affects wildlife. Located in Mexico ways. City, the dump reached its life. Landfills tend to pile up and take up an insane amount of space. The United States used to send the waste from landfills to other countries such as China, but in 2018, China refused to take 27 different types of plastic. Other countries followed suit, and so from now on, we have been in charge of taking care of our own waste from our landfills. The second option that can happen to a water bottle is when it's littered and it gets caught going down a stream, and that stream turns into a river, and that river turns into the ocean. The plastic bottle will float for a while, but soon enough it'll get caught into the currents and it will be torn into a vortex This is, that is called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The current of the water move in circular motions keeping the trash trapped into this big pot. This is just one of five of plastic filled vortexes. But sometimes when plastic doesn't get caught into these, It'll stay and it'll float where animals will get stuck. And some animals will see the brightly colored objects and mistake them for food. When they've eaten the plastic, it'll give them a feeling of being full so they won't eat and they'll starve to death. These toxins can be passed up the food chain. For example, if a little fish eats some garbage, the squid eats the little fish, the tuna eats the squid, and we eat the tuna. And most plastics don't biodegrade, so they'll just break down into smaller and smaller pieces, which are called microplastics. Microplastics are still just as bad, but they are extremely harder to find and pick up, seeing as they blend in with the sand. Even though they are so small, they can still affect us too. Researchers still haven't identified the effects of eating fish who have eaten microplastics. And there's one more option of where plastic can end up. Some people decide to take all their plastic and all their garbage and to burn it. This is a really harmful thing to the environment and to us. A new report reveals that 70 million metric tons of plastic is burned worldwide each year. Toxins that this releases poses not just a threat to us, but to vegetation and animal health. I think what we need to do as a society is to recycle and to reuse our products instead of letting them sit in a landfill. There are many ways to reuse and recycle. One of the biggest ways that I think you personally can reuse and recycle is by taking your own bags to the grocery store. Secondly, I think grabbing a reusable water bottle would really help the cause. Some people strongly believe that recycling and reusing is not the answer to our plastic problem. 
They think this because a lot of what gets put into the re recycling bin still goes into the landfill. This means that 18 to 20 percent, and even sometimes 30 percent, of the materials are contaminated and need to get sent to the landfill. But I still think that this isn't fair because the global recycling rate is 10 percent. So I think we should focus more on upping the percentage of how many people recycle. And even if you just go on YouTube, there are so many ideas for you to have on how to recycle and to reuse things into your house. Personally, this is where I go to get ideas, and where you can too. I think that we really need to start putting our energy towards recycling because plastic takes up so much of our lives, such as utensils and plates and syringes. It takes up so much of the medical field and even such things like prosthetics, which are really, really important. And I don't think that people can afford to change to different materials because of price. Recycling and reusing is what we need to focus on now to stop this issue.